when there is a crisis in this city or state, we are coming together. We are sending a loud message with the men and women of the clergy and the other offices in this uh, city. We are in a moment where we're facing a multitude of crises at one time, and we won't succeed if we're not united. And coming here today, the governor reached out to me and stated that she wanted to be here to send a loud message for these families and to say thank you to the men and women who went in this building, some of these firefighters, their, their oxygen, their oxygen tanks were empty and they still pushed through the smoke. You can't do this if you don't feel attached to this city and this community. And I really want to thank them uh, for putting their lives on the line to save lives. Over 30 people are in the hospital, 19 deaths, nine of them are children, are babies that we lost. And we're all feeling this. And we're going to be here for this community to help them navigate through this. Many of these young children went to schools. We will have a social and emotional support at their schools to ha help the classmates. Uh, we're here as well with the Red Cross and OEM uh, is going to coordinate together to get housing and also some of the emergency needs uh, that the people who experience this trauma experience. And it's so important that we have the faith-based leaders here. Uh, this was a large uh, Muslim population. Uh, Sheikh Musa is here uh, that knows many of the residents. They came from Gambia. And we want to make sure that we're sensitive to the cultural needs. Uh, the ME's office is going to coordinate to make sure that we respect the burial rights of the Muslim community as well as others. So our message is clear today. During a tragedy, we are going to be here for each other. There's more to be discovered. The FDNY is doing a thorough investigation. Commissioner Nigro will update us on the latest. But it, is a, it appears as though this stemmed from a space heater. But the marshals are here. They will give us a thorough investigation to turn out, ter determine exactly what took place and what we can do better not to have this repeated. Yeah. And so at this time, I want to just thank the governor of the state of New York, yeah. who's here with, her, with us today, yeah. you, and just to ask her yeah. to say a few words. Governor. Thank you, Mayor. We are indeed a city in shock. Yeah. It's impossible to go into that room where scores of family who are in such grief who are in pain, to see it in a mother's eyes as I held her, who lost her entire family. Oh mm, Jesus. It's hard to fathom what they're going through, but I went table to table, helped children make their ramen noodles and eat their pizza, and let them know one thing, and the mayor and I are united in this. We will not forget you. We will not abandon you. We are here for you. So your elected leaders from your Senator Schumer on down to our council members are united here to support this community, to say tonight is a night of tragedy and pain, and tomorrow mm. we begin to rebuild. Mm. We rebuild their lives and give them hope, especially those who came all the way from Africa, Gambia, in search of a better life right here in this great borough, the borough of the Bronx. Mm. They're part of our family. And with, when I prepare my budget this week, I'm going to establish a victim's compensation fund for the individuals I just sat with and said I will not forget you. Yes. There'll be money to help Thank them you, find new housing for burial costs, for whatever they need. We'll take care of them because that's what we do here in the state of New York. Yes. We are here for the Bronx and we're here for anyone who needs us. And I thank the leadership of our mayor, our fire commissioner, Nigro, and all the men and women in uniform who went into a building yeah. Yeah. not knowing their own fate and they still went in there and rescued people and that's why i'm so proud to be the governor of a state like this Amen. you cannot keep us down ever we are united together thank you thank and may god bless the individuals who are suffering 
and the souls of those we lost, particularly the children. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Governor. And uh, I'm just so happy when I reached out to our state senator and asked him, can he come up and join us today without hesitation? He came up just to be here and show our united front. Uh, thank you, Senator Schumer. Senator Schumer. Thank you, Mayor, Governor, and everyone here. You see the outpouring from of every level of government from all parts of the city. I just came up from Brooklyn. It is such a tragedy, thinking of children, mm. thinking of families, thinking of so many people in this building, immigrants striving to climb that ladder up and their lives snuffed out. It's awful. I want to thank our firefighters. Unbelievable. They always rush to danger. They don't care. They don't they don't worry about themselves. They just go in there. And they were here, from all reports, very, very quickly. We appreciate that. At the federal level, we'll do whatever we can. There is housing assistance. Mm -hmm. There is tax assistance. And maybe most important in this instance, immigration assistance, so families can be united, because many of these families have come from overseas and need to be here. And I just pledge, and I long, I saw my colleague from Congress, our Congress member, Richie Torres, we pledge to do whatever we can at the federal level. But New Yorkers are united in standing by when there's a tragedy, we come together. That's right. yeah. We don't care about ideology, we don't care about race, creed, color, religion. We come together, we embrace one another, and we say, we are for helping New Yorkers who need help. That's who we've been for the history of our city. And on this awful night, that doesn't change. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Senator. Thank and I think the Senator Thank raised a good point. This is a heavy uh, immigrant uh, community. And we want to make sure Sheikh Musa uh, let the residents know that if you need assistance, uh, you, your names would not be turned over to ICE yeah. or any other yeah, right. institution. Uh, we want people to be comfortable in coming forward, and it's imperative that we connect with those on the ground uh, to make sure they get that message and that word out. And so we want to allow and have Commissioner Nigro come forward to give you any technical updates on what took place and the updates on the investigation. Commissioner? Thank you. Commissioner. Thank you, Mayor. And, and let me just say that uh, my entire department mourns along with the families here today uh, and our entire city. Uh, we're all about saving lives, and the loss of one life is sad for us, much less 19 lives. Mm. As the mayor said, this fire began uh, in an apartment that spans two floors on the second and third floor of the building. Uh, it started in a malfunctioning electric space heater. Uh, that was the cause of the fire. The fire consumed that apartment that is on two floors mm. and part of the hallway. The door to that apartment, unfortunately, when the residents left, was left open. It did not close by itself. The smoke spread throughout the building, uh, thus the tremendous loss of life and other people fighting for their lives right now uh, in hospitals all over the Bronx. So we are investigating uh, uh, where everyone was found, how the smoke traveled, but certainly um, the marshals have determined through physical evidence and through um, uh, first-hand accounts by the residents that this fire started in a bedroom in a portable electric heater. Right. Wow. See, any questions that you can answer? Any questions that I can answer, we'll be happy to do that. The um, for, I heard someone ask about the heat. The heat was on in the building. This was it was being used to supplement the building heat. Uh, there were smoke alarms throughout the building. The first call that came in was due to uh, some uh, uh, a neighbor hearing a smoke alarm and looking and seeing the smoke and calling. There were reports that this was a, a very frequently malfunctioning smoke alarm system, that the alarm went off frequently, and that's why a lot of residents may not have felt urgency to leave. Are you confirming any of that? We will look into that, but uh, I cannot confirm that now. There were reports also that residents didn't know where to escape, where the fire escape were. Well, on buildings like this, there are no fire escapes. There are interior stairways. 
So the residents um, should know where the stairwells are. And um, I think some of them could not escape because of the volume of smoke.